Hi, I'm Josh Bartell, CEO of Hydrian Inventory Optimization. We're here with another home educational video, and this week's topic is inventory performance from a customer service perspective. We're going to talk about four terms that are most often used to describe inventory's performance for customers, and those are fill rate, back order rate, in stock rate, and service level. We're going to talk about the differences between those, how you calculate them, and why you might want to use one versus another. First, I'll talk about fill rate and back order rate. I'm grouping those together because they're really measuring the same thing, and that's the percentage of actual customer demand, actual customer sales orders that you can fill from stock. Um, if your company permits back ordering, back order rate uh, would make sense. If you don't do back ordering and you just cancel uh, lines that you can't fill from stock off of the customer order and, and notify the customer, then obviously back order rate doesn't apply. Um, but I think those can basically be used interchangeably. I'll call it fill rate from here on out in the video. Um, I think that when we talk about fill rate, calculating it's pretty straightforward. Let's say a customer orders 100 units, you have 50 in stock that you ship them, your fill rate on that uh, line was 50%. Now, in that example, I'm using a unit fill rate. How many units, what percentage of units did I fill from stock? I think it's most common for customers to use line fill rate. So in that example, I have a 0% line fill rate because I could not complete that line entirely from stock. So if a customer orders, let's say a 10 line order, Nine lines are totally in stock, but that 10th line, I'm 50 out of 100 units. I'd have a 90% fill rate on the order. I don't get credit for the line I'm partially in stock on. Line fill rate, I think, is a better measure because each line I think of as a customer asking you to ship them an item. And if you can't do it in its entirety, that's a customer service failure. Um, is it a thousand times worse to be out of stock on that thousand unit order for washers than it is to be out of stock on that one unit order for you know, a $600 motor? I think most people would agree not. And so line fill rate gets at you know, the different, I guess it kind of corrects for some of those uh, discrepancies. There's also order fill rate. And like line fill rate, you have to be perfect to get credit. So an order fill rate is simply moving up the chain here. You have a 100% unit fill rate on 100% of your lines for a given order. So on the example we've been talking about, where I'm in stock on 9 out of 10 lines, but only 50% in stock on the last line, I don't get credit. That's a 0% fill rate on that order. Um, another term for this is the perfect order rate. Because from an inventory perspective, if I am giving myself credit for an order fill. That means I was in stock on every unit, on every item the customer wanted on that order. That's obviously the best outcome, um, at least from a customer service perspective. So uh, we feel that tracking all three of those things is really important. Um, and you know, people also use dollar fill rates. That's fine. Um, but I do think you need to have some sense of what percentage of customer transactions, actual customer transactions, went as I would want them to from an inventory perspective. Um, some industries rely on unit fill rate over line fill rate. That's fine. Just track all three. Um, and I think you'll have a pretty good picture of how the inventory is performing in response to actual customer demand. Next, we'll talk about in-stock rates. The primary difference between an in-stock rate and a fill rate or back order rate is that in-stock rates are a measure of expected demand that you're in stock for. It's usually based on a sales forecast. So for example, if an item hasn't sold for several months, you might very reasonably have a zero forecast for that item. If you have zero available on the shelf, you're probably not going to ding yourself for being out of stock. It won't count against your in-stock rate. Of course, that doesn't mean a customer is not going to buy it. So this is one of the ways in which a fill rate or back order rate can be a better customer service metric or a more accurate metric because your customer doesn't care about your forecast. Uh, even if you didn't think something was going to sell or didn't think it was going to sell as well as it did, if it does sell well that day and you don't have it, you've obviously disappointed a customer. So that's one of the pitfalls of an in-stock rate. And the more of a long tail or broad inventory you have of low volume items, the less uh, accurate your in-stock rate is going to be as a customer service metric. The second major implication of in-stock rate, and one of the reasons why it can be a better measure of customer service than your fill rate or back order rate, is that in-stock rate doesn't care whether or not customers actually buy product or not. And if we're talking about items or your business is one where Customers are very sensitive to stock status. They literally won't place an order if an item is out of stock. Well, then back order rate might not be a great measure because you don't get a back order if no one buys it. And your fill rate won't get dinged if you're out of stock on an item because no one's purchasing it. But of course, that's an inventory failure and it's, really, it's affecting your top line directly. It's really bad news. The good thing about an in-stock rate is it says, okay, I had a sales forecast of 30 units for this thing today. I'm out of stock, so I'm not actually going to sell any. But because I was out of stock at the beginning of the day, 
I'm going to ding myself on my in-stock rate. So that's one reason why it's really important to track both in our opinion. But for some businesses or some items, in-stock rate is a more accurate measure of customer service. Now that we've talked about how in-stock rate can have advantages and disadvantages for measuring customer service, a very common question that we get asked is, well, what's in stock mean? How many units of an item do I need on the shelf to count it as in stock? And that's a great question. If you sell something 100 times a day and you start the day with one unit on the shelf, I think we'd all agree you're in trouble from an inventory perspective. So in that situation, what we recommend doing is take the greater of one day of expected demand or the median order quantity. And if you have more than that number on the shelf available for sale, we count the item as in stock. The reason why we have that OR statement, we're using the one day forecast or the median order quantity is because if let's say um, once a month you sell a pack of six units of an item and right now um, you have two units on the shelf, well from a raw numbers perspective looking at the forecast you'd say okay well my forecast is less than one unit of sales per day if I'm only selling six units per month, I have two units on the shelf, I'm sitting pretty. But if every single order you get is for a case of six, and that's the median order quantity, um, you know that you're probably going to disappoint the customer when they finally do come and, and place an order for that item. So that's why we recommend using the higher of those two numbers. Some people use a week of um, expected demand. That feels excessive to us. An important thing to remember is that generally, unless you're running an extremely tight inventory, the difference between those two measures is going to be inconsequential. So you, if you have at least one unit in stock, your numbers aren't going to turn that out that different uh, if that's how you measure your in-stock rate than if you do use the more complicated method of saying a day's forecast or the median order quantity. The last topic I want to cover with in-stock rates is to discuss how to weight them. So we've talked about how for an individual item we can determine whether it's in-stock or out-of-stock. So let's say you sell 10,000 SKUs and I'm in-stock on 5,000 of them. Does that mean I have a 50% in-stock rate today? Well, that would be one way to measure it, but it's not the one we recommend. A lot of our clients will break down their inventory by velocity class, you know, your A, B, C items, and they'll do a separate measure within each of those categories. So of all my, you know, 100 A velocity items, I'm in stock on 98 of them, so I have a 98% in stock rate. This is getting closer to an important idea, which is that when I'm in stock uh, on a high volume item, that's a lot more critical than being in stock on a really low volume item. And Conversely, if I'm out of stock on that flagship item, that's really bad. Whereas if I'm out of stock on you know, a D item that sells a few times a year, less bad. So the way that we recommend doing is coming up with a single weighted in stock number. Take every item in your inventory, determine whether it's in stock or not, and then take the total percentage of SKUs that are in stock, but weight each one by some measure of sales activity. The one we most often use is transactions during the last 90, sales transactions during the last 90 days. Um, so an item that has had 80 sales transactions during the last 90 days would be four times the weight of an item that's only had 20 sales transactions during the last 90 days. That whole weighted number that you get at the end of that process is going to be a really good approximation of what is the percent of total demand that I'm in stock for um, for my customers today. And that's really what you're after. So certainly, you know, break it up by velocity class, count individual SKUs. Um, you know, if you're a brick and mortar retail business, being in stock on a raw number of SKUs and having good presentation might be really important to you, but we also really recommend getting that weighted percentage nailed down as well. The final thing I'm going to go over for this talk is service level. I'm just going to throw this in there. Service level uh, has a technical definition. We see clients use it to mean whatever sort of in stock or fill rate metric their business uses. So if back order rate is what everyone has their eye on, that's their service level too. If in-stock rate is the number they are most concerned with, that's what they call their service level. So I'll just call service level your inventory performance, your inventory customer service performance. Um, I would uh, encourage you to use whatever, whatever word you like um, because there really isn't a, a standard usage for this word that we found, at least in dealing with our clients. So that's everything for this week. I really appreciate everyone watching. Um, we have gotten a surprisingly large number of emails and LinkedIn comments asking for different topics. So we have a laundry list of stuff that we want to get through. Sorry, we haven't produced uh, as much content as we'd like, but we are trying to do this every week or two. So far, we've been sticking to that schedule pretty well. Uh, look forward to doing another one. And as always, reach out to info at hydrian.com or find us on LinkedIn. Shoot us a private message if there's anything you'd like for us to address. Stay safe and thanks.